Good morning. Where are you? That was kind of puny. Let's do that again. Good morning. Hey, there they are. I knew you were out there somewhere. We are so glad that you have come and we welcome you to this time of worship. My name is Pastor Deborah Lerner. I'm the senior pastor here at Shepherd of the Hills. If this is your very first time with us, we are especially glad that you are here today. And if there is any way we can be helpful, we hope you will let us know. We do invite newcomers to stop by our welcome booth, which is just in front of me out these two sets of doors. And there you can pick up a newcomer bag. It looks like this. It's a thank you for coming and a reminder of your time with us. So do avail yourself of those if you are new to our church. It is helpful to us if you will let us know that you have been here. If you are online, you can do that by filling out the online registration of attendance. If you didn't come in through our constant contact, you have to go to our website to to find that link. But those of you who are in the room, we invite to fill out the connections card, the green connections card. It looks like this. And as you exit, you will put it in the box by each one of the doors. Our prayer is always that you find the things that your heart is longing for. We don't, I don't know what that is. You know what it is. And you can always trust that God knows what it is. So if you're needful of hope or joy, our prayer would be that you'll walk out of here knowing tomorrow's going to be a better day and, and full of, of joy at the thought that that is the truth. If you're needful of strength, we hope you'll go out knowing you can do whatever is going to be in front of you today. Whatever that is, some of it will come from those who are sitting beside you and worship because we are the body of Christ and we do that for one another. All of it ultimately comes from the one who calls us here, the risen Christ, who is present here as the host of our worship. You're here because of him. And our prayer would be that you feel that presence and that you are transformed by an encounter with the living Christ. We begin every service in the very same way, reminding ourselves what God thinks of us. I didn't make this up. This comes from the first chapter of Ephesians. So I invite you to remind yourself right now, I am chosen. I am blessed. And I am loved. Isn't that good news? It's true for the people around you, whether you wish they'd sat somewhere else or not. So I invite you to stand up as you feel comfortable and put a big smile on your face and say to someone near you, you are chosen, you are blessed, and you are loved, and that is the truth. And now before you sit down, let's tell our online guests that they're the same thing. Let's remind them, look at that camera over there, and say, you are chosen, you are blessed, and you are loved. And that's the truth, too. You may be seated. Our mission candle shines today for a number of wonderful things. It shines in celebration of Gretchen Phillips on her 87th birthday, October the 10th, with love from Paul. She's right over there. It shines this week in celebration of Charles and Carol V. Cheatham's 65th wedding anniversary. They're right back there. (laughs) Wave at us. They were married October the 5th, 1958, and we just pray that you will be blessed with many more years together. And it shines this week in celebration of Marie Iverson for her birthday on October the 12th. The special occasion is also honored with the white rose on the altar today. It's on this side over here. From Rodley Hogan, who says, with my pure love for you. And for that, we, we applaud as well. Now I invite you to settle in and prepare your hearts for worship.
Good morning. I am Pastor Ron Friesen, Assistant Minister of Care. Please rise as you are comfortable and join me in the call to worship, which will be on the screen. O God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing with joy. For you guide the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. My name is Ken Goodenberger, and I'm the music director here at Shepherd of the Hills. We invite you to remain standing if you're comfortable doing so as we sing our opening hymn, Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above. Please remain standing as you are comfortable and join me in the opening prayer. God of all times and places, we are grateful that there will never be a time or place where your spirit is absent. In the best of times and in the worst of times, you are with us, here in Sun City West or at the far corners of the universe, you are with us. Today, tomorrow, and forever, you are with us. You guide us, sustain us, revive us, and enable us to go on, to matter what life brings to us. Guide us now, sustain us, revive us, enable us to worship you in spirit and in truth. For we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake, Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. I am Lewis Cornwell, your liturgist for today. Our scripture reading comes from Psalms 23. We're using the familiar King James version of this psalm, and you're invited to recite it with me. It will appear on the screen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yet thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. 
Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just a word about our anthem this morning. We're joined by our good friend Maya Dinger on oboe. Please welcome her. What a beautiful, beautiful way of expressing those same ideas, but with music, which touches the heart. Would you pray with me? Now let the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Before I move into my message, I want to give thanks uh, for 
last week for Ron stepping in so ably to bring you a message. I found that after our the death in our family on the 23rd, I had the sermon ready. I was able to preach the 23rd and the 24th, but that next week, my mind just went kerfluey. You ever had a loss and you know what I'm talking about? I just wouldn't have been able to preach a sermon that week to put one together to save my soul. So without very much notice, Ron stepped up and prepared a message. Daniel was on vacation, and you were blessed by that wonderful message on communion last week. I'm just grateful to have two pastors who are such good preachers and who enjoy preaching. And so whenever I need to breathe, you have a a good preacher here in the pulpit, for that is, is a great, great gift. I had planned to do three sermons on Psalm 23, but as it happens, we're going to do one sermon on Psalm 23. It is one of the best known and most beloved and oft quoted scriptures in the entire Bible. I can't even tell you how many times I have stood by a bedside with a family in distress, maybe because a loved one is so ill, maybe because a loved one is really on the brink of death, sometimes after a loved one has passed from this life and and could think of nothing else to do and so would just say, come on, let's hold hands around the bedside and let's say together, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There is something about this psalm, its lyrical beauty perhaps, Or maybe it's the promises that it carries. It has great power to soothe even the most troubled soul and great power to bring a sense of peace even in the midst of chaos. I have a tapestry with this psalm hanging above my bed and sometimes when I can't sleep, I say it to myself again and again. And yet to preach on it is really challenging. Anytime there is something so familiar, we sometimes don't hear the fullness of it anymore. And that can get in the way of of grasping the, the enormous impact of its promises. And for that reason, I had put into your announcements uh, an insert that looks like this. And it contains four different translations of the 23rd Psalm. And my invitation to you this week is to hang this somewhere where you will see it. Maybe that's on your bathroom mirror. Maybe it's on your refrigerator. And then each time you walk by and see it, at least a couple of times a day, read one of these translations. Read the 23rd Psalm in a different version so that it can become more and more deeply embedded in your heart, all the fullness of it. This coming Saturday, I will preside over the celebration of life for my former husband, David. We have been caregiving for him for a long time now. His religious background was nominally Jewish, but he wasn't associated with any synagogue or any religious leaders for many, many years. And so I didn't know quite how to do this with my family and for my family. I I didn't even know what that ought to look like. I had been to a couple of, of nominally Jewish services for his parents, but they were pretty secular. So I Googled it. What else do you know? Who knows everything but Google? So I Googled Jewish memorial service. Guess what the first thing that came up was? Psalm 23, (laughs) this psalm transcends the borders of faith traditions. It goes across the boundaries of our faith. It speaks to our Old Testament brothers and sisters just as it speaks to us. And in the complete Jewish Bible, which is what I will use when I do that celebration of life, it begins like this. Adonai is my shepherd. I lack nothing. That's different, isn't it? I lack nothing. 
One of the things you immediately notice about this psalm is how deeply personal it is. God is my shepherd, my. That's a, an intimate, deep connection. But in the Jewish translation, in this Jewish Bible, what I appreciate is the present quality, the present dimension of the translation of this first line. We might miss that in the King James Version. Because we say, I shall not want, as if that's going to be tomorrow. I may want now, but tomorrow I won't want. That's kind of how it reads to us. But this translation from the Jewish Bible is that the declaration is that right here, right now, no matter what is going on in my life, maybe I'm in the midst of grief, maybe I'm in the midst of loss or sorrow, Maybe I'm even in the midst of trauma. Maybe I'm in a difficult moment where I'm not even sure where I'm going to sleep tomorrow. In this moment, no matter what, there is not one thing that I need. That is an amazing thing. Why is that? Because I deny the Lord our God is enough. God is enough. God was enough yesterday. God is enough today. And God is going to be enough tomorrow, and that's going to be true whether there's money in the bank, whether there's a friend to share a meal with, whether there's anything on the table. I have everything I need. Eugene Peterson's translation in the message says it quite explicitly. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing, not one. And the contemporary English version speaks to the dimension, the lasting dimension of this declaration. I will never be in need. Never be in need. It is a radical claim, isn't it? In a culture that is so not like that. A culture that relentlessly presses us to believe we need at least one more thing. Maybe a lot more things. Maybe we need something big. Maybe we need a new car, but not just any old new car, right? A new car like that Buick SUV that parks itself. You know, you turn the little dial and it backs into the space all back. Don't you think you need that? Truth is, I wouldn't trust that. I'd be afraid that it wouldn't do it right. And the truth is, I don't really need that. As much as they try to make me believe it. I don't really need it. Maybe I need a truck, you know, a pickup truck that can go into a cave with a rocky floor that looks impassable and pull right up to the, to the back of the cave. And when I see that, I always say, how did they get it out? Who backed that thing out of there? You know, sometimes the claim is that we need smaller things. Sometimes the claim is we need lots of them. Who wouldn't benefit from one of those little devices that you put down on the floor and you pedal to exercise your legs and your feet, right? Or a new kitchen, or a new bathroom, or a suitcase with wonderful wheels, or a cruise, or a night at the casino, and it just goes on and on. But no matter what the ad, the message is always, you need this. You need this. Don't you want this? You need this. And this psalm radically counters every bit of that propaganda. (laughs) It says, Adonai is my shepherd. I lack nothing. I think we should put little plaques on our TVs that say that, you know, right down below where the ads show. Just say, Adonai is my shepherd. I lack nothing. But for me, it'd be more effective if you put it on my computer where I usually go in and type Amazon.com and then I buy something. We don't really even need all the things that we already have. I have to say about Amazon.com, I don't really need these shoes that I recently purchased. Did you put them hold over to see? I find them quite fun. I did purchase them on Amazon.com. They make my feet happy, but I don't need them. I don't need one thing as long as I have God and God has me and God always has me. 
The psalmist also reflects on other promises of God and declares his bedrock trust that God is going to provide whatever he really needs, whenever he really needs it. It may not be what he wants, when he wants it, but at the deepest level, his needs will be met. Those deep needs for rest and refreshment, for sustenance, for restoration of the soul, for a hand to guide him into right paths, even when times get dark and scary. And then right in the middle of this psalm, exactly in the center, comes the psalmist's direct de- declaration of God's abiding presence in all places at all times. I was reading a couple of commentators. One said that in, there are 55 Hebrew words in this psalm, and almost none of them are repetitions. That's unlike other psalms. Many of the other psalms repeat a refrain. This one does not. And right in the dead center of the psalm, at word number 28 in Hebrew, comes this declaration, you are with me. And it turns out that all the rest of this psalm is true because you are with me. In the King James Version, when you reach this point in the psalm, what you realize is that everything up to now has been about the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In this verse, it becomes a deeply personal conversation with the Lord. It becomes a deep prayer of the Spirit. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. During Advent and Christmas, we sing Emmanuel, Emmanuel, and we connect those, that word with the phrase, God is with us. And that's the right thing to do. We connect those words to Jesus. Jesus is the one who makes real that God is with us. But we may forget that this is not really a new idea. Psalm 23 reminds us God has always been present with God's children in powerful and life-giving and sustaining ways. It's just that that presence became real and visible in the life of Jesus. And because God is with God's children, including each one of us, we don't ever have to be afraid of anything. In the final verses, the psalmist reminds us, all of us, of the abundance of life that is ours because we belong to God. And the picture is of a feast spread out to be enjoyed right in front of the enemy, right in front of whoever it is that has done the most to make your life miserable. You get to eat right in front of them. And, and in the Old Testament version, they're not invited. And as that happens, you're anointed and your cup runs over runs over with the goodness and grace of God. Jesus changed this image a little bit, challenged us with the idea that that the feast is spread for us, but always it is also spread for our enemies. (laughs) And they are welcomed, too. Makes it a little harder. And then the final promise of this psalm, again from the Jewish Bible. Goodness and grace will pursue me, will pursue me, will run after me, chase me down. Goodness and mercy shall pursue me every day of my life, and I will live in the house of Adonai for years and years to come. And here's the image of a God who hounds us with grace and goodness, so determined to bless, even if we resist, even if we run, God as the hound of heaven. And then at the end of homecoming, 
a homecoming to the very house of God for years to come, and other translations forever. I'm going to invite you to reach for that insert and turn it so that the the, um, complete Jewish Bible is the one that you're looking at. I think Cliff is going to put this up for us, too, if you'd rather look on the screen. We're going to read this together in actually two versions. We're going to start with this Jewish Bible. Would you read it with me aloud? Adonai is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He has me lie down in grassy pastures. He leads me by quiet water. He restores my inner person. He guides me in right paths for the sake of his own name. Even if I pass through death's dark ravines, I will fear no disaster, for you are with me. Your rod and staff reassure me. You prepare a table for me, even as my enemies watch. You anoint my head with oil from an overflowing cup. Goodness and grace will pursue me every day of my life. And I will live in the house of Adonai for years and years to come. It's a whole different feeling, isn't it? And now I want you to reach for the contemporary English version. Turn it over. It's the last one on the back side. You, Lord, are my shepherd. I will never be in need. You let me rest in fields of green grass. You lead me to streams of peaceful water, and you refresh my life. You are true to your name, and you lead me along the right paths. I may walk through valleys as dark as death, but I won't be afraid. You are with me, and your shepherd's rod makes me feel safe. You treat me to a feast. While my enemies watch, you honor me as your guest, and you fill my cup until it overflows. Your kindness and love will always be with me each day of my life, and I will live forever in your house, Lord. And to that I simply say thanks be to God. Amen. A song of response is number 377, It Is Well With My Soul. I invite you to stand as we sing this together.
Please join me with an attitude of prayer. Yes, God, even though I would be in the valley of the shadow of death, even though I would be struggling, even though I would be grieving, you are with me, you comfort, you strengthen. I may not see, but if I truly trust and believe that you are with me, it is well with my soul. Thank you, O oh God, for being the God that knows us by name. You see our coming and our going, and you know each and every one of our hearts. We praise you this morning, and we trust and believe that it is well with our soul. Amen. time, we usually spend a moment highlighting a ministry of our church so you know where your gifts are being used. Today we are highlighting our pastors as part of our Pastor Appreciation Day. Here at Shepherd of the Hills, we have four pastors on staff. Pastor Deborah, our senior pastor, Pastor Daniel, our associate pastor, Pastor Ron, our Assistant Minister of Care, and Pastor Cliff, stand up, Cliff, <laughs> our Minister of Digital Arts. So I asked myself, why do we have a day for pastors? And of course, I went right to Google. The concept of pastor appreciation started with the Apostle Paul as he was establishing the first Christian churches. In 1 Timothy, he wrote, The elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. As I started to research Pastor Appreciation Day, I found some comments that others have made about their pastors, and I found that they apply to our pastors, too. When God needed someone to take care of his flocks, he created the pastor. Pastors are important to both God and man. May you never cease to be relevant. A pastor's work is like a shepherd who guards the flock against wolves that aim to tear and scatter. Thank you to our pastors for all that you do. We thank God for sending you into our midst. We sincerely appreciate your devotion, your dedication, your love, your spirit, your teachings, and your wisdom. Thank you for being wonderful pastors. We are deeply grateful for the hard work and sacrifice you make. Aside from being a pastor, you are a counselor, advocate, a teacher, and a friend. Thanks for always going above and beyond your pastoral duty to fulfill every one of these roles. We do appreciate you. We far too often forget that you are human and have a life outside the church. Family and other responsibilities you also have throughout the week. We can easily think that a pastor is just there to serve us and deliver a sermon that we want to hear, and if either of these doesn't go the way we want it to, we forget 
that you are also pastoring an entire congregation. I'd like to offer a prayer now for our pastors. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending to Shepherd of the Hills these four pastors who spend their early Sunday mornings and the late weeknights as they prepare for sermons, for lessons for a class, and all the committee meetings they attend. Thank you to our pastors for the seeds they plant and the disciples they nurture. Thank you to our pastors for the sermons you preach and the prayers you lift up. Thank you for the wise counsel and the words of encouragement. Thank you for the sacrifice and service. Thank you, Lord, for the ministers and our congregation who have made Shepherd of the Hills their home. We are blessed to have you with us. In his name we pray. Amen. SPRC asked the congregation to show their appreciation for our pastors, and we have gathered those for each of you. In closing, we would like to give a heartfelt thanks to our pastors for making a significant difference for our congregation and the world. Happy Pastor Appreciation Day. Thank you. And now, with thanksgiving for our pastors, I invite you to rise and join in our song of praise. remain standing as you're comfortable and join, join me in prayer. God, for your constant presence in our lives, we give you thanks for guiding us through the darkest places. We give you thanks for providing us with everything we need. We give you thanks. Gratefully, in response, we bring these gifts and offer them with our hearts and lives. Receive them and use them for your purposes, that your love might be known throughout the world. We pray in Jesus' name, as together we offer the prayer that he taught us. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to thank one more time Maya Dinger for playing with us this day. Thank you, Maya, for being here. I invite you all to remain standing as we sing our closing hymn, Just a Little Talk with Jesus. Thank you. 
have to blame me for that one. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> when we went through the bulletin review the other day, I asked them to make it sound like Willie Nelson, and both Bill and Ken said we'd have to put the piano out of tune to do that, and we'd rather not. So, so we had it the way we had it, but what a wonderful, wonderful song. Thank you for coming. It has been so good to be together. If you are a newcomer, remember to stop by and pick up a newcomer bag. And if you're new, we also hope you will join us for a newcomer lunch next Sunday at 1115, right after this service over in the fellowship hall. If you'll sign up, we'll just make sure that we have enough food. There's a sign-up sheet out at the kiosk. We're coming up to homecoming week. And you know, for the last several years, we, we just do all kinds of fun things on homecoming week. And we are, you're going to need tickets for a few of those, and those are on sale today. You can buy a ticket for Homecoming Sunday Picnic on the Grounds, which will be Sunday, October the 29th. They're $15. The Performing Arts Series Masquerade Concert by Dan Reed and Nicole Pesci will be the next day on the 30th of October. Wear your costume. <laughs> Take a selfie at our Haunted House photo booth. Tickets are $10. Meals of Joy lunch on Halloween Day, Tuesday the 31st, 11.30, with the program on the services available in Sun City West. Like, for instance, did you know that the library here will mail you things if you can't get there? They'll mail you books. They'll mail you DVDs. So they, we have all kinds of wonderful little tidbits like that. Julie Calvert will be out at the kiosk after the service to sell you those tickets, or you can come by the office during the week. Tonight is Oktoberfest, and come even if you didn't sign up, because they have extra brats. I've been told by the brat cooker that there will, be t there will be room at the table for you. So come for accordion music and some fun tonight. I think it starts at 5.30 with the program at 6. Communion will be served here in the front pews uh, after the service, and our prayer ministers are in place at the end of these front pews for those who would like to come for that. And they have cake in the fellowship hall for pastor appreciation day so join us for cake over in the fellowship hall and now receive the blessing now may the grace of the lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion and fellowship of the holy spirit be with you now and always amen